existence, but few of us hear the stories of the men who fight the fires and fight the fears we all share. Firemen are our saviors, the first called in in any emergency and often the last to leave. When you dial the emergency line in desperate need of help, the most comforting voice you'll ever hear is the fire dispatcher who says we're on the way. The journal's Jerry Thompson recently spent a week in the life of the busiest fire hall in Canada, Toronto's Station 7. Pumpers 4 and 7, aerial 7, car 41, respond to a community guardian alarm, 63, Bellstone Place. Pumpers 4 and 7, aerial 7, car 41, respond to a community guardian alarm, 63, Bellstone Place. Acknowledge. the busiest fire hall in Canada, Station 7 on Dundas Street East in Toronto. When the guys go roaring out of here, they don't even stop long enough to close the door behind them. Now, they don't rescue cats from trees, but they do pry people from stuck elevators. They go to car wrecks, heart attacks, a lot of false alarms, chemical spills, explosions, and fires. You wouldn't believe all the things these guys get sent to. And the thing is, they don't even know what they're up against until they get there. Clinging to the truck with one hand, strapping on a Scott air pack with the other, a man's body weight increases 60 pounds on the way to the fire. Then a quick glance at a very familiar building gives the crew from Station 7 that sinking feeling. It's just a hunch, but they've been here so many times before, it's like the umpteenth repeat of a bad movie. A fast search of all the floors, and one last look confirms the obvious. This was somebody's idea of a practical joke. Last year, the crew from Station 7 responded to 882 false alarms, most within a six-block radius of the fire hall. In the shadow of downtown Toronto, a neighborhood called Regent Park is as rough as it gets in Canada. Tenements, rooming houses, winos and junkies, domestic violence and drug abuse. It's an endless flow of social turmoil that ends up on the doorstep of firefighters like Tim Randall. They know if they call the fire department, the fire department's coming right now and we'll do something for them. If we can't do it, we'll find an agency that can. So we, we get the ball rolling now. You know, there's no delay. They know that. They know that the crazy firemen run out for everything. With 27 stations spread out across Toronto, fire crews frequently are closer and quicker to a medical emergency than anybody else. Last year, Pumper 7 answered 1,447 calls for medical help. That's 40% of their workload. This call was supposed to have been for a seizure. That's not how it turned out. Watch you go around the side. In the, in the back. Just call for it. Want to go to the hospital area? Yeah. Firefighters cryptically refer to this as an HBD. The man has been drinking. The guy's name is Larry, and they've obviously been through this routine before. The distance between humor and death is a thin red line the firefighter walks day after day. It's the most dangerous job in the country. It may not look dangerous in the quiet time between calls, but a firefighter is twice as likely to be killed on the job as a police constable. One of every four firefighters will be injured on the job in any given year and life expectancy is nine years less than the general population. 
but most firefighters love the job and say they wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Call a fire, Harley. Oh, listen. Uh, it's 552 Church. The fire alarm's going off here. We don't know whether there was a fire in the building or what. Yeah, okay. We're on the way, ma'am. If you need help, those are probably the most hopeful words you'll ever hear. We're on the way. In three minutes or less, the crew from Station 7 is there. Many times, these guys are so fast, they put out a fire before all the people are out of the building. In this case, they doused a fire in the garbage chute before our camera crew even got up the stairs behind them. And, unless you've had a fire at your house, you've probably never seen firemen do this. Mop up the mess afterwards. But of all the grungy things they have to do, only one is really bad enough to complain about. I'm terrified of the bugs, the lice and the cockroaches and what have you that you see in 99 out of 100 of these apartments. If we have a fire situation or heat or whatever, and we're down on our bellies or on our knees, crawling to find the fire or to find a victim or what have you, the bugs are coming out as you're going in and you're, you're on them and rubbing them and, and you bring your clothes back to the station and you'll see the guys are paranoid about shaking out their clothes because they don't want to take this home. You know, this is, this is an aspect of the job that's disgusting. But again, it goes with the area. Now it's time to shatter a myth. These firemen don't sit around playing cards because cards and gambling are against regulations. Oh, look at what your partner had. But dominoes, really aggressive dominoes, are okay. Three, five, Adam. It's true they do like to eat. In fact, Ivan Jackson, captain of the rescue squad at Station 7, has earned quite a reputation as fire hall chef. He gets his men to cut up a small mountain of veggies, and then Captain Jackson creates yet another masterpiece. I used to cook in the other hall I was in. And when I came down here, they uh, kind of liked eating and wanted a meal, so we made one and two and three, and then before you know it, it's uh, every night, every day. I gather you're rather chef. famous for it now. Yeah. Oh. Not famous. That's you're not, never famous. That's not what I hear. Yeah. Ivan Jackson's rescue truck, an 18-ton rolling toolbox, responds to nearly every major alarm. And because the city has only two trucks like this, Ivan's crew covers the entire east side of Toronto. Okay, they've reported a working fire. On arrival, it looks like just a small fire, but imagine the possibilities in a lumber yard. Might be up in that hopper. A tiny blaze in a sawdust bin can quickly become an inferno. But if they get enough water on it right away, they can stop it from spreading to the stacks of lumber. And when hoses hit the hopper, sawdust splatters, wood chips, wet gunk, and it's freezing cold out here. But they did stop the fire with not much damage to the building. Can't see. Not a thing. <laughs> you gotta the what a wonderful alarm. job. Super job. I wouldn't have it any other way. Toronto Fire, Harley. Hello, there's a fire here next door. 288 Gerard Street East. There's a house full of fire. Over here. Okay. Okay, we're on the way, man. Bye. What runs through the mind en route to a fire? Where do they get the nerve to rush into smoke and flames when everyone else is scrambling to get out? You're about to see why nobody has a bad word to say about the people who fight fires. No 
single fire, no rooming house is exactly like the last one. So there's no way to plan ahead, no way to avoid the chaos, the fear. Human bodies fueled by adrenaline taking calculated risks to find people still trapped in a two-alarm fire. Oh, another guy at the top. Let's see if I can test the ride over. Yeah, I'm going to go over. That's the big fire that was reported on the front of the The flames are coming up from the basement. Ride the whole one. Move the whole line and you get through. In there, go in a little bit and then these stairs will go down. The flames are coming up. Okay. Doing four turning. Twenty radio and two. Turn it on, ready, ready. Turn it on. Sometimes even the quickest response is not good enough. They found a woman curled up near the base of the stairs. They got her out, but it was too late. Mixed emotions hang in the smoke of a killer fire. The sick feeling of having lost a human life. The elation of having saved another. One more. One more. Okay. I mean, we've been in the back door there, and all you could feel was heat as soon as you stepped inside the door. What are you going to do? You just got to crawl along and hope you find somebody, you know? Bernie O'Keefe pulled the woman from the fire. Yeah, I, uh, you know, it, how can you describe something like that? I mean, I couldn't pick words out of a dictionary to describe it. It's, a, it's an ugly feeling, actually. Uh, 20 years on a job, and I still can't get used to it to a certain degree. Two people died here tonight. Eight others were rescued. Poking through the rubble afterward, investigators found this rooming house fire was caused by a combination of drinking and careless smoking. In a room on the front side of the house, a man with an artificial leg was pulled from the flames, but he later died in hospital. The people who lived in these tiny cluttered rooms lost everything they had. But this one man got out with his life. Okay. Thank you very much. And he wanted the firefighters to know how grateful he was. For the journal, this is Jerry Thompson in Toronto.